Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to Playing With Power MTG, where we play with the most powerful cards in the most powerful formats. The Deck Forge, a Discord server that focuses on deck brewing, ran a deck building challenge called the Crucible. The goal of the challenge was to build a unique, high powered deck that could strive and thrive through trial by fire focused gameplay. Decks were rated on power, optimization, innovation, and novelty. Multiple people submitted their entries, and the top four decks won a $75 credit to the store of their choice and a special showcase on tonight's episode. We recommend you check out the Deck Forge Discord channel. They are a really cool place to brew and see what the latest is in the world of deck brewing. A link is in the description below. Before we get into tonight's episode, we wanted to let everyone know that Dragon Shield is running a campaign to help out local game stores. When you make purchases at dragonshield.com shop, they will give back 25% to your local game store. This is just one more reason why Dragon Shield is our favorite company for gaming accessories. Please click the link in the description to help out your local game store. We have also revamped our merchandise store and added all kinds of new items. Every purchase helps out the channel. Check out the description for more info. Finally, this video was brought to you by Patreon. Support from our patrons goes a long way to help this channel, and you get all kinds of perks for signing up including free access to our CEDH webcam league, where season two is in full swing. Check out the description below and sign up today. Now, let's start out by showcasing our fighters this evening. First, we have Mike piloting Thanos, Urza's apprentice. This deck submitted by user Nathan of the Guilt Leaf aims to control a game using counter magic and stacks effects long enough to execute one of its multiple game winning combos. The primary combo in this deck uses the commander along with Sands of Time to generate infinite mana during the upkeep. Mike's opening hand contains a Trenosphere, Mana Crypt, Is It Signet, Stranglehold, Chain of Vapor, Steam Vents, and an Island. Next, we have Ryan piloting Zerta the Dawn Waker. This deck, called Foxy and submitted by user Grand, is a fast combo deck prioritizing combo kills over excessive stacks pieces. It seeks to use its commander to gain infinite colorless mana through engines like Grim Monolith and Basalt Monolith and sink them into colorless mana sinks for the win. Ryan's opening hand contains an Enlightened Tutor, Goblin Cannon, Grand Abolisher, Inventor's Fair, Walking Ballista, Sacred Foundry, and a Swords to Plowshares. After that we have Folger, piloting the three color pairing of Nakara, Lair Scavenger, and Yannick, Scavenging Sentinel. This deck, called Scavenger Hunt and submitted by user Centipedantic, is a mid-range reanimator style deck aiming to leverage powerful cards like Razaketh the Foul Bloated for combos or Villas Broker of Blood to grind and outvalue opponents. Folger's opening hand contains a Necropotence, Timna the Weaver, Demonic Tutor, Prismatic Vista, Good Fortune Unicorn, Eladomri's Call, and a Razaketh the Foul Blooded. Finally, we have Adam, piloting Vadrock, Apex of Thunder. This deck, called Pat Sajak, and submitted by user Cyrus the Snorlax, is a combo control deck that aims to generate a ton of card advantage and or resource denial through the combination of wheel effects, card stacks pieces like Alms Collector and Narset Pardo Veils, and the ability to recur them through its commander. Adam's opening hand contains a Fierce Guardianship, Time Twister, Talisman of Progress, Mana Crypt, Brain Freeze, Dovin's Veto, and a Bloodstained Mire. Without further ado, let's kick off this miraculous masquerade of multiple masters. Mike wins the Cheese its challenge and gets to start us off. Mike draws for turn and then plays an island. He casts a Mana Crypt. He then casts Trinisphere. The whole table just lost their first two turns. Mike smiles and then passes the turn. Ryan draws for turn and then plays a Sacred Foundry tapped. He passes. Adam draws for turn and then plays a Bloodstained Mire. He passes as well. Folger draws for turn, and then plays a Prismatic Vista. He also passes. Mike draws, and then plays a Steam Vents, into play untapped, paying two life. He casts Stranglehold. With everyone knowing things are going downhill fast, Adam responds by cracking his Bloodstained Mire for a Steam Vents, into play tapped. Folger then responds by cracking his Prismatic Vista for a Forest. With nothing else, Stranglehold resolves. Mike passes. Ryan draws, and plays a Plains for turn. He gives the turn to Adam. Adam draws and plays a Fiery Islet for turn. He shifts the turn to Folger. Folger draws and then plays a Silent Clearing for turn. He ends his turn. Mike draws and then plays an Island for turn. He casts an Is It Signet. He casts his commander, Taunos, Urza's Apprentice. He attacks Folger with Taunos. Folger takes a hit and Mike passes the turn. Ryan draws and then plays an Inventor's Fair for turn. He casts Dranith Magistrate. 
Adam and Folger resign themselves to just not playing any actual magic this game, and Ryan passes the turn. Adam draws, and is unable to do anything because of the stacks on the board, and passes the turn, discarding the hand size. Folger draws, and plays a godless shrine into play untapped, paying two life. He casts Good Fortune Unicorn. Folger passes. During his upkeep, Mike loses his mana crypt trigger and takes three damage. He draws for turn, and plays a mountain. He casts Fabricate. Fabricate resolves, and he fetches up a Sands of Time into his hand. He then casts Sands of Time. This is a good time to pause and read exactly what Sands of Time does, since it isn't commonly seen at CEDH tables. Sands of Time reads, each player skips their untap step. At the beginning of each player's upkeep, that player simultaneously untaps each tapped artifact creature and land they control, and taps each untapped artifact creature and land they control. This basically means that when this artifact's trigger resolves, everything that's tapped becomes untapped, and vice versa. This is especially useful with Thanos' copying ability. With nothing else, Mike passes. During his upkeep, Ryan resolves Sands of Time. He draws for turn, does nothing else, and passes. During his upkeep, Adam resolves Sands for Time. He draws for turn, does nothing else, and passes, discarding to hand size. During his upkeep, Folger resolves Sands of Time. He draws and then casts a Lana War Elves. Good Fortune Unicorn triggers, and Folger puts a counter on his Lana War Elves. All through, Folger passes. At the end of Folger's turn, Ryan casts Swords to Plowshares, targeting Mike's Tano's. Tano's moves back to the command zone, and Mike gains one life. During his upkeep, Mike resolves Sands of Time. A special mention should be made that now his Trinisphere is tapped, which shuts off its ability. He draws, and then casts a Lotus Pelter for turn. He casts a Strionic Resonator. Mike passes. During his upkeep, Ryan resolves Sands of Time. He draws, and then casts his commander, Zerda the Dawn Waker. He attacks Mike with Dranith Magistrate, and passes the turn to Adam. During his upkeep, Adam resolves his Sands of Time. He draws, and then casts a Mana Crypt. He casts a Talisman of Progress. He taps his Fiery Islet to cast Dockside Extortionist. Extortionist enters, and Adam creates seven treasures. All through, Adam passes. During his upkeep, and in response to the Sands of Time trigger, Folger taps his Lana War Elves for mana. Sands of Time resolves, and Folger resolves his taps and untaps. He draws, and then casts Timna the Weaver. Good Fortune Unicorn triggers, and Folger puts a plus one plus one counter on Timna. He attacks Adam with Lana War Elves and Mike with Good Fortune Unicorn. Both take the hit, and in his second main, he pays two life and draws two through Timna. He plays a Vernon Catacombs for turn and ships the turn to Mike. During his upkeep, Mike resolves Sands of Time. He draws for turn and then casts a Mind Stone. He cracks his Mind Stone to draw a card. He casts Basalt Monologue. Mike passes. During his upkeep, Ryan resolves Sands of Time. He draws and then casts Grand Abolisher, which the table does not like. It resolves, and Ryan passes the turn. During his upkeep, Adam responds to Sands of Time by tapping his Talisman of Progress. He then resolves Sands of Time. He draws for turn, and passes to Folger. During his upkeep, Folger resolves Sands of Time. He draws, and then moves the combat, attacking Adam with his Lana War Elves, and Mike with his Good Fortune Unicorn. Both take it, and in his second main phase, Folger pays two and draws two through Timna. He plays an Arid Mesa for turn. He casts an Elvish Mystic. He puts a plus one plus one counter on it through his Good Fortune Unicorn. He passes the turn, discarding to hand size. During his upkeep, Mike resolves his Sands of Time. He draws and plays a Mountain for turn. He does nothing else and passes. At the end of Mike's turn, Ryan floats mana from his Inventor's Fair in order to untap it through his Sands of Time. During his upkeep, Ryan resolves Sands of Time. He draws and plays a Marsh Flats for turn. He passes. During his upkeep, Adam responds to Sands of Time by floating mana from everything but Fiery Island. He resolves Sands of Time and untaps. He draws a card, does nothing else, and passes. During his upkeep, Folger responds to Sands of Time by floating all of his mana, including Silent Clearing, and casting Assassin's Trophy, targeting Mike's Stranglehold. Stranglehold is destroyed, and Mike fetches up an island. With Sands still on the stack, Folger cracks his Arid Mesa. Ryan responds by cracking Marsh Flats to fetch up a Plateau. Then Folger fetches up a Savannah. He then taps his Savannah, and then resolves Sands of Time, tapping and untapping. He draws, and then cracks his Verdant Catacombs to fetch up a Bayou. Folger then casts El Schnorn, Grand Cenobite. Ryan is super sad because he loses his Grand Abolisher, and Adam's Dockside also dies. Folger puts a plus one plus one counter on El Schnorn through Good Fortune Unicorn. He attacks Adam with Timna, and Mike with Good Fortune Unicorn. In response, Mike casts Chain of Vapor, targeting Folger's El Schnorn, bouncing it back to his hand. Folger doesn't copy it, 
and then combat resolves with Adam and Mike taking the hit and Folger gaining life through Temna. In his second main, Folger pays two and draws two through Temna. He plays a scrubland for turn. He passes the turn, discarding to hand size. During his upkeep, Mike responds to his Sands of Time by activating Strionic Resonator, copying the ability. The copied ability resolves, and with the original trigger on the stack, and with Trinosphere shut off, Ryan responds by casting Enlightened Tutor. He fetches up a Basalt Monolith onto the top of his library. With Trinosphere still tapped, Folger responds by casting Vampire Tutor. He fetches up a card onto the top of his library and loses two life. Then Mike's Sands of Time resolves. He draws for turn, does nothing else, and passes. At the end of Mike's turn, Ryan floats all of his mana. During his upkeep, Ryan resolves Sands of Time. He draws for turn and then casts Basalt Monolith. He presents a loop of tapping Basalt Monolith for three colorless and then untapping it for one, reduced through Zerda, netting two colorless each time. He generates infinite colorless mana. Ryan then casts Goblin Cannon. In response, Adam casts Dovin's Veto, targeting Goblin Cannon. In response, Ryan pays three through Trinosphere and casts Deflecting Swat, redirecting Dovin's Veto back to Deflecting Swat itself. Deflecting Swat resolves, Dovin's Veto fizzles, and then Goblin Cannon resolves. Ryan activates Goblin Cannon, holds priority, and then activates Goblin Cannon repeatedly, targeting each player with enough damage to win the game. Ladies and gentlemen, very interesting game. Let's take a look at some highlights. Mike's turn one and turn two plays completely changed the whole dynamic of the game and even disrupted everyone's opening hands. Having to rethink your whole strategy on your turn zero is actually pretty difficult. While he was presented with infinite mana during his upkeep through his commander and later through Strionic Resonator, he didn't really have anything to sink it into. He was also completely flooded on mana. He kept getting lands, petals, and rocks, but nothing that really furthered his game plan. Folger's Assassin's Trophy targeting Stranglehold was to get him back into the game. Unfortunately, Ryan was able to win before he could get back around to him. Ryan was patient when he should act. He was keeping a sharp eye on the Trinosphere for whenever it was turned off. Mike's two stacks pieces completely turned off his game plan, so he was mostly treading water until his moment came. Adam was unfortunately completely hosed by his position at the table, with all of the stacks pieces on the board. A turn one Trinosphere followed by a turn two Stranglehold, followed by a Dranith Magistrate just completely wrecked his game plan. Then, Sands of Time turning off things like lands and treasures made for a hurdle he just couldn't overcome. The player of the game was Mike. He was definitely leading the direction of the game, with everyone using their interaction to deal with his board presence. His Sands of Time was really forcing players to reevaluate when to play their pieces. The most valuable card was a little hard to decide this game. We definitely considered Sands of Time for this spot, as it was making people do a lot during their upkeep. However, while people had to do more in their upkeep itself, it really didn't take much for players to play around it. So, the most valuable card goes to Trinosphere. This card completely hosed everyone else's turn one and turn two play, kept people on the back foot for all of their turns, and everyone watched it like a hawk for when it became tapped or untapped. We wanted to thank all of the brewers who entered their decks into the Crucible deck building competition. A major congrats again to the winners. These top four decks were an absolute blast to play, and we highly recommend you check out the deck lists in the description. Very cool and inventive brews are in the Deck Forge Discord server, and we suggest you definitely check them out. Well, that about wraps it up for this episode. Tune in next time when we will duke it out to see who will be king of the competitive EDH table. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next time.